So I wanted to pick up where we left off last night and get to epoxy coating these tabletops. But sadly, after reading the instructions for the epoxy and watching a couple YouTube videos on how to do it, it has to be 75 degrees, between 75 and 90 degrees. So uh, it's only like 65-ish right now. I emailed the company, seeing if there was any kind of workaround for, for working in lower temperatures and there isn't. So I have the heaters running in the garage right now. I wanna see if I could get it up to 75 degrees and if I can, I might save this for tomorrow when it rains um, so I could work inside the garage and take advantage of the nice weather we're having today. And I think I'm gonna put the gutters on right now and work on the lights. So let's get into it. So these are the gutters. They're just like little basic J channel pieces. I'm gonna take some Scotch-Brite and just clean them up just to get some of the anodize or uh, corrosion off of them and make them look a little bit cleaner and try and match the brush look of the hinges and like the front window that I cleaned up. So I'm gonna clean these up and then uh, see how I'm gonna put them on. All right, so basically all you gotta do here, at least hopefully all you gotta do, is line these up with the existing holes that were here. Uh, some of them might have another rivet in it that I'll have to drill out. Um, and I'm just gonna rivet these on. And then I'm gonna take the, they make, well, I have um, the same sealant that I rolled onto the roof. They make it in like a caulk form. And then I'm gonna go across the top and on the bottom so water doesn't get behind the, between the gutter and the uh, trailer itself. So I ended up fighting with the front section of this gutter for probably over an hour. The rivets ended up being a little bit too short and some of the holes didn't exactly line up to where the original roof panels were riveted to. So I ended up using stainless steel screws, uh, self-tapping screws to be exact, so that it would suck everything together and they were longer than the rivets that I had so they would actually reach the structure behind it. So last night when we left off, I was putting the lights on the around the roof of the trailer and it started to drizzle. I didn't get it on camera, but we rushed. We put uh, we put everything away. I closed up the tarp and uh, it ended up not raining, of course. So um, I wrapped up the lights on the roof, thankfully. So I'm realizing now that I didn't actually film myself putting the lights on the roof. There was a storm coming that night and I wanted to get all the holes closed up prior to see how waterproof the entire trailer was as a whole, but we didn't end up getting to that and I had to throw the tarp on. So back to the video. In time before the rain, the little bit of drizzle that we had started. So right now I'm gonna get into sealing up these countertops. We had a little bit of a, a problem. Uh, the epoxy has to be, the temperature for the epoxy to work, it has to be at least 75 degrees and we're not at that temperature yet. I was gonna try and heat the garage and keep the door shut, but I don't really wanna breathe the fumes in and it just creates a lot of inconvenience for everybody else. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna use uh, oil-based polyurethane and uh, do a bunch of coats. And if it doesn't hold up, then I'll have to strip these back down to nothing and at the end of the year or something, and I could use the tabletop epoxy. But uh, for now, I'm gonna do the polyurethane. I think it'll look really awesome still. And uh, I'm gonna jump into doing that. I wait for that to dry I'm gonna jump over to working on the lights again I'm gonna try and get the tail lights put in and then start wiring everything because I don't want to do anything that's gonna create dust and so these are the lights I got the original ones were two 
studs and it was just two round incandescent lights. I got these LEDs. So I'm gonna get to lining these up and drilling the holes to mount them. And then hopefully I can get to wiring some of these today. I got the four tail lights in. Now I'm gonna jump to putting the trailer plug and junction box. So this has all the connections that correspond with uh, the trailer plug, the seven pin trailer plug. So I'm gonna hop into mounting that on the trailer and then I'm gonna start running some wire. So rather than just say it, I figured I'd show you, this is what I was talking about. Each one of these studs corresponds with the, the plug. All right, so I got the junction box all mounted up with the trailer plug. I'm gonna start wiring together the tail lights and the running lights and see if we can make some progress. So I got all the clearance lights on the roof wired up. I just have to tie them into the plug down here. And then I should be able to wire up the brake lights. I didn't get to do those today, but they are mounted and I have to order a license plate light. So the countertops hardened up pretty nice. I just hit them with some 220 sandpaper and now I'm gonna throw another coat on and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit them with 220 again and put a third coat on. The second coat of poly is on and it looks awesome. During the week, I actually added uh, another two coats of polyurethane. I sanded with 220 between each coat to get it as smooth as possible. Um, now that it's all cured and hardened up, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to wet sand these and buff them out so you get a glass-like finish. So to start this process, we're going to use some 1500 uh, wet-dry sandpaper. This will let us smooth these out. I know they look pretty smooth and glass-like already, but it's actually rough to the touch you could still feel a little bit of there's a couple little bubbles here and there and some some dust that settled in this stuff so we're going to start with this i'm going to make sure to soak it pretty good using a squirt bottle and try not to get the wood too too drenched if there's any cracks you don't want the wood soaking in but wet the sandpaper really good put some down on top and then just keep adding water as needed just to keep the sandpaper you'll feel it bind up if if there's not enough water so i'm going to hop into that and see what happens. So you can see here I started sanding this, uh, wet sanding this with the 1500 and you could tell the difference how it's nice and gloss here and then you look over and it's a little hazy and, and white colored. Um, that'll go away in the next step but I'm gonna get to wet sanding all these and then uh, we'll hop into the next step. <music> All right, so now that I've wrapped up wet sanding uh, the bar tops, I'm gonna get into polishing them. Um, I'm gonna be using a dual action polisher. The main difference is uh, between like a classic polisher and this is that this actually moves in in orbit as well as spinning. So it helps prevent uh, burning through polyurethane or burning through paint if you're working on a car. Um, I'm gonna use an old uh, cutting pad that I have lying around that I wouldn't use on a car anymore, but for this, it, it'll be fine. Um, and I'm going to use some polish that I just bought from a, a regular automotive store. So basically once the pads on the machine, you're just going to want to put um, a couple dabs of polish around the edge and then maybe one in the center just so you don't have any dry spots on the pad because that would be bad and create a hot spot and could mess up your finish. 
Um, and then you just start moving in a uh, fluid, uh, medium speed, I guess you could say, um, movement uh, back and forth and try not to sit in one spot for too long. So I'm going to show you how that's done and then you can check out the results. completely see the difference that was the polisher on medium speed you don't really push too hard only took probably 30 seconds to get from this to this so I'm gonna do the remaining bar tops and I'll show you them all together when I'm done Now that the four bar tops are all polished, you can see they're incredibly glossy. Big difference from just leaving the polyurethane the way it came off the brush. And this other one over here. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video or at least learned something from it. If you did like that video, hit that like button and subscribe to find your way back. Comment down below if you enjoyed the tutorial toward the end or where I could have improved. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.